New era, new champion, new rosters on NXT and they've already ruined it before it even gets brought into effect. Welcome back guys to Fog Wrestling. Chelsea Green got drafted to SmackDown. The draft comes into effect after the pay-per-view, yet somehow we're going to see Chelsea Green compete next week on NXT for the NXT Women's Championship. Make it make sense. It makes no sense, but I just wanted to point that out there because I'm not going to spend 10 minutes ranting about it later on in the video, but this draft is dumb. They insult our intelligence. The, the entire setup of the draft is stupid. The fact that you can already draft people that are already on your brand is completely dumb. And then less than 24 hours after night two of the draft being completed, they just go and make a mockery of it by putting Chelsea Green on NXT for a title match. So, whatever. Look, we all know the draft's fake. We all know it doesn't mean anything. It's irrelevant. They always ruin it. But to ruin it before... That's two, that's two years in a row now where they've fucked up the draft before it even got implemented into effect. So, yeah, crazy. Anyway, Trick Williams comes out. New champion. It's the whoop that error. He said he's going to break records. He's going to continue to make history. He gets introduced. Inter interrupted, sorry, by Lash Legend, and she comes out, congratulates Trick, says he's the hottest man in NXT. Trick then asks Lash if she wants a little taste of the champ. And that's not very PG, as our truth would say, but Lash Legend kind of calms him down a little bit. Because he isn't her little Reese's Cup, at least not yet. Lash Legend says she doesn't like Reese's Cups. She's more of a Kit Kat chocolate bar kind of girl. And um, I don't really know what we're doing here. But Trick Williams is like, well, let me break you off then. What am I? What I'm going to say is, <laughs> and then she just kind of like interrupted him, and there was an envelope here, and essentially there is something important in the envelope. But if Trick Williams wants it then he's going to have to appear on Metaphor next week on the on that, you know, four-way goofball TV segment. I don't know. Whatever. No, I'm dar. Who cares? Uh, look, I don't mind this, but, I mean, come on. Should Trick Williams and Lash Legend really be opening up the show? Lash said next week things are going to get really, really hot, so... I'm assuming that Noam Dar wants a shot at the title. I'm assuming that's what's in the envelope. Uh, then Ariana Grace took Gigi Dolan out for dinner. And it was kind of cool because Ariana Grace is explaining to her how to eat properly, about dress code, uh, mannerisms, behaviour. And uh, Gigi started running down the card and uh, she was using lots, lots of like puns and metaphors and stuff like that with cutlery and food and temper and... She's also burping as well uh, after taking a big glass of fizzy water, which <laughs> which made Ariana Grace be absolutely appalled by. But yeah, whatever. So that that was okay. Decent way to run down the show. Obafemi versus Ivar for the NXT North American Championship. Just two big guys going at it for the belt. I mean, we all knew Obafemi was going to win. Obafemi does win, and then after the match, we get Wesley. He is back, and he wants his title. So, yeah, we got that. We got a vignette for two new guys as well. Uh, Fallon Henry didn't want to come out tonight for the match with uh, Fia Hale. She's disappointed not to be drafted, but Hale convinces her to go, go ahead with the match, really. She comes out to accompany her. It's JC Jane versus Fia Hale. Chase University, Fallon Henley at ringside, Jasmine Nix at ringside, JC Jane got her nose busted open or her mouth busted open, something was busted open, lots of blood here in this match, uh, Fia Hill wins, and then Fallon Henley attacks her from behind, so I don't know why Fallon Henley did that, but it's another person I guess that is, doesn't like Fia Hill, and then we've seen Fia Hill backstage asking, why always me, why is everybody betray me, why is everybody turn on me, we got the Good Brothers then taking on this new tag team making their debut, and the Good Brothers win, so why are the Good Brothers, I just don't get it, why the fuck are the Good Brothers beating this new tag team, doesn't make any sense to me, I mean you've got the Good Brothers, I haven't won a match in God knows how long, but let's send them to NXT, so they can inflict a defeat on this team making their debut. 
Look, I'm not saying you have to win your debut, right? John Cena didn't win his debut, but he lost to Kurt Freaking Angle. I mean, these two new guys have lost to the Jobbers, the Good Brothers. So, uh, what is it? Where's your career going when you're losing your first match against two bums? So, I mean, I, I don't really get that. Um, after this, we had the Street Profits backstage with Axiom and Nathan Fraser. Didn't do much for me. Uh, then we got an Ava Rain segment. I mean, she is by far the worst. I think she's all, she's almost as bad as Tony Khan. Ava Rain fucking sucks. She announced that there's going to be the Women's North American Championship. Said that the female roster is going to compete in a combine. I've no idea what a combine is, but the 12 superstars that impress the most will have six qualifying matches to qualify for this ladder match that will determine a new NXT North American Women's Champion. There you go. Uh, Jada Parker came out, Sol Ruka came out, uh, Ariana Grace came out. You know, Jada Parker does seem like she's got charisma. She's definitely got something here, so I think there's potential with Jada Parker. Uh, Mi Chin, though, came out. She wants to be in this combine. Why? Why are we sending down this jobber for the main fucking roster? You know, this 35, 36 year old that's achieved nothing. Why are we sending her down just to, you know, take a spot from somebody in NXT? I, I don't get it. I, I, it just makes no sense to me. Uh, Ridge Holland versus Sean Spears. Ridge Holland beats Sean Spears with a running Death Valley driver. He also hit a Redeemer DDT. So Ridge Holland here picking up some wins. Picking up momentum in NXT. Don't quite know where it's going, but you know what? At least I give this guy a chance. He, a lot of people are hating on him. So, uh, Roxanne Perez was backstage. She was complaining to Ava. Why, she, why didn't she get drafted to Raw or SmackDown? And it's because she's the champion, but she doesn't believe that. Ava says, look, you're the champion. You were protected. But Roxanne Perez believes that Ava has some sort of weird vendetta against her. Could they perhaps be building to a match between Roxanne Perez and Ava Rain? I don't really care if that's what they're going to do. So, I mean, knock yourselves out. But, I mean, Ava Rain just sucks. It doesn't matter whether she's a GM, manager, fally, wrestler, commentator. She's just not very good. And she's only there because she's, she's related to The Rock. I mean, that's it, really, isn't it? If The Rock wasn't her dad, she wouldn't be in that company. That is, that's the God's honest truth. Uh, Josh Briggs then thanks Ivar for softening up Obafemi. He's going to get him next week. Wes Lee says it's his title though, and he appreciates that Briggs can hang with Obafemi, but he's going to get his belt back. And this kind of had Briggs and Wes Lee going face to face with each other, so I'm assuming we'll get a match between those guys. Uh, Axiom and Nathan Fraser taking on the Offers of Pain. Axiom and Nathan Fraser win. I mean, what's the point? We're trying to portray the Final Testament as a great selection for Raw. Oh, Raw's getting this, you know, this dominant faction. Dominant faction, my ass. I mean, when was the last time they fucking won a match? I mean, when was the last time they were victorious? I mean, never. Hasn't happened. They're bums. You know, they fucking, they literally lose every single week. There's just no value in the Office of Pain. The only one that can cut a promo is Paul Ellering. Very sad. How can the old guy, how can the decrepit old guy be the best thing about the faction? The rest of them need to hang them, to hang their heads in shame. And I don't know exactly what's going on with, uh, what's her name? Scarlet Bordeaux, but she's looking, uh, she just looks very fake these days. And I don't know if she's had like lots of plastic surgery or shit like that. But I mean, she doesn't look like the smoke show anymore. That is 100% for sure. But whatever. Uh, we then got Brinley Reese, someone, yeah, so I don't know who Brinley Reese is, but she brought Edris and Ophi and some other guy, two black cats, but apparently black cats are bad luck, and this guy broke a mirror last week. Did he break a mirror? I don't remember it, but yeah, he broke a mirror, now he's been given a black cat, and he's freaking out because he's got bad luck. If I cared about the guy, then maybe I'd be a bit more interested. Unfortunately, I do not. Then in the main event, it was Natalia with Carmen Petrovic versus Lola Feist with Shayna Baszler in the women's underground match. I mean, this was not bad. It was it's decent. You know, it's something new. It's like an MMA-style kind of match with no ropes. It's You can't win by pinfall. You can only win by knockout or submission. I mean, the match was entertaining, I guess. Natalia had it won. She had the sharpshooter on. But then Shayna Baszler grabbed 
Carmen Petrovich from behind. She was choking her out. So Natalia tried to save her best friend. She did save her friend, but then she got back in the ring. She ate an elbow from Lola Face, and then Lola Face came just raining down with punches on Natalia. The referee called it off. TKO, I guess. Technical knockout. Natalia unable to continue. Lola Face wins. Does a little wee dance, shaking her ass, and that's it. Lola Face is victorious. Then we go to the back, and Roxanne Perez is still annoyed why she's still here. What does Ava Rain want with her? Ava Rain then announces that she will defend the title next week, and her opponent is going to be Chelsea Green, who just recently got drafted to SmackDown. So why Chelsea Green is coming to NXT next week when the brand split and the draft rosters are already into effect, I don't know, but there you go. That's what's happening. So Chelsea Green, Roxanne Perez next week on NXT. As for this week, guys, you know what? Um, yeah, the I thought the Fia Hale JC Jane match was okay. The the turn was not bad. The wee dinner segment was fine. Uh, Trick Williams was okay. We had the the main event I thought was decent as well. But I don't I don't feel the need to have like her offers of pain and the Good Brothers. Why are we bringing these fucking bums down to the show? You know, it's like it's spring breaking. Let's showcase some NXT talent. Why are we bringing these jobbers from the main roster? onto NXT to, what's the reason, just so they can stink out the joint, I don't get it, anyway, I'm going to give it um, a, a 4 out of 10, it was alright, it was it was not bad, but just get rid of the good bros, get rid of the final testament and, and have more NXT people on the show, why not, where was Tony D tonight, I know he was on spring break last week, but why couldn't we have a segment with the family? I would much rather a family segment and just get rid of the good brothers and get rid of the offers of pain. Why not do that? But anyway, guys, that's it. Catch you in the next one. Till then, peace.